Hi, my name is Megan, and this is Everything Lit. Today, I'm going to do a book haul because I have acquired many books since the last one. And I might do these every month or so because I have a lot of pre-orders that are coming in and I have a problem. I buy way too many books. So let's go into it. Um, the first set of books I got on a trip with my mom. We went um, on a road trip from Michigan to Portland, Oregon. These are books that I picked up at the Portland Staple Powell's Books. Um, it's a giant new and used bookstore, one of the largest indie bookstores, I feel like. And it was huge. I was so overwhelmed. I wish that we had had more time in there because I was like, we were on our way somewhere else. But I got a good like hour and a half in. So it was fantastic. And these are the books that I got. So the first book I got is Nevada by Imogen Binney, or Imogen, Imogen Binney. And this is a road trip story about a trans woman who steals a car and just drives away. And this is um, sort of an older book that got reprinted. And when I say older, I feel like it was published in like 2014, 2013, so close. And I, so one of the reasons I got it, one of the reasons it's on my radar is because I am writing a book with a trans main character and I want to do my research and see how other people write trans characters and, you know, do my best to not mess it up. The next book I got was recommended to me by a family member and that is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. Of course, I know all about this book. It is an HBO documentary series now. Um, I have friends who told me about it when it was coming out in hardcover. I wanted to wait until it's in softcover, so now I have it. And this is about this author's investigation into the Golden State Killer in um, California in, what was it, the 70s? So it's true crime, nonfiction, I hear it's really great. Right, the next book I got is The Impossible Lives of Greta Wells. This is by Andrew Sean Greer. Um, I recently read his book, Less, which is like a Pulitzer Prize winner. It was really good. So I picked up something else by him. And this is about a woman whose twin brother dies and she accidentally starts time traveling, starts getting, I think, electroshock therapy or something for her depression and starts time traveling to, let's see, it says 1985, 1918, 1941. So it's another time travel book. Gotta add it to the list. And I, maybe I'll read this in a time travel vlog. Ideas for future, Megan. The next book I got is Red Clocks by Lenny Zumas. And this is a like futuristic dystopian story about abortion being illegal and how that actually affects in vitro fertilization and um it follows what five women and i bought this because of the recent political climate and this has been on my radar for a while uh and i finally was like you know what it's in this store it's used it's cheaper i'm buying this now and hopefully reading it can make me feel better or it'll make things scarier. You never know. The next book I got is Calypso by David Sedaris. This is another book recommended by my cousin, Laura. She doesn't watch these because I haven't told anyone. <laughs> so this is a series of humorous essays about his life. Um, he's pretty well known for Naked and Me Talk Pretty One Day. And he just has like a really funny perspective on life and I read like the very first page about like being middle-aged and having a guest room like you've hit a certain level of like wealth and prosperity when you own a house with a guest room because you have this whole bedroom that you don't use for anything except for when people come over they can stay there and his tone is really funny and like, I get that. I identify with that. I don't have a guest room yet. So, 
I got this. I bought a lot of nonfiction. I'm excited. The next three books, I still got at Powell's Books, but on this road trip with my mom, we stopped in Ketchum, Idaho because I am a huge Hemingway stan um, for reasons that I can't quite figure out. So I bought a couple Hemingway books because they had an interesting selection. So I bought Winner Take Nothing, uh, which is his collection of short stories that came out, I think, second, his second collection of short stories. Um, and I have, I, I don't know why I'm collecting these because I have an entire thick book that is like all of his short stories collected. But I still bought this because like this is the collection that he put together, not just like a conglomeration of everything. The next thing I bought is something that I have been on the lookout for, and that is The Sun Also Rises, which was his first novel. And I've been looking for a pretty version of this book forever because they don't publish pretty versions of Hemingway's books, and I, I don't understand why. They have like 8 million copies of Fitzgerald books. They have, you know, Little Women in these beautiful covers and special editions. And something about Hemingway just doesn't get special editions. So when I found this illustrated edition, I snapped that up. This has like really beautiful illustrations throughout. And I, um, I've already read this book like twice, but I wanted a pretty one, you know? So then the last thing I got is Conversations with Ernest Hemingway. And this is sort of a compilation of various interviews he did, conversations that people had with him, like journalists and interviews. And the reason I got this was because I opened it to a random page and the question was basically like, what do you think about Hollywood and like authors who like sell their rights or whatever? Do you think it has diluted the, or not dilute, like diluted like writer's talent or something? I don't, I don't remember the exact question, but Hemingway's answer was like, whores will always find work. And it's like, oh damn Hemingway, like calm down. So basically if you're going to sell out, you're going to be a sellout regardless of talent. I don't know. He was harsh. So obviously, after reading that one sentence, I bought it. All right, the next set of books I got on a different trip because apparently July was just the month of trips. So I went to visit a friend in the Chicago area and of course it's a writer reader friend. So we went to some bookstores and it was a great time. So she got me this book called Fondling Your Muse, which is amazing. Um, the title alone really just suits me. Yeah, because that's how do you get inspiration? You fondle your muse. Duh. Well, I've read a couple pages, a couple chapters of this, and it's very much like tongue in cheek, funny, but also genuinely helpful. So like I just turned to the chapter, um, creating your villain. And it says, above all, your villain needs an interesting name. I'm like, yeah. Cruella de Vil, Ursula, you need an interesting name. It needs to be unique and memorable while also suggesting malice, but not be too overboard. So it's like, yes, it is helpful, but it's also kind of like making fun of like writing advice. Like I, I think it toes a line and yeah. So thank you. Next set of books I got are from that trip we went to a Barnes and Noble because I'm trash for Barnes and Noble and I got in another maybe in another life by Taylor Jenkins Reid and this is about this is about a woman who at the end of the night has like a choice to leave with her friend or leave with a new guy that she's met and I feel like the storyline goes it follows each decision like if she made this decision this is how her life would go and if she made this other decision this is how her life would go and this is one of taylor jenkins read taylor jenkins reads older books um prior to you know seven husbands of evelyn hugo fame so i'm interested to start on her backlist look i got is the accidental pinup by danielle jackson and you can see this is part of the buy one get one 50 percent off 
So this is about a photographer whose best friend is launching her own lingerie line. And um, the main character, I believe she's plus size. And like they need a model for some of this lingerie and she agrees. And I think she meets, um, ah, she meets another photographer who is doing the shoot. And I think sparks fly. I don't know. The title's cute. Body positivity. Tr those are my like by words. I bought it. I was on vacation. Okay. And then I also got the romance recipe. <laughs> this was my other of the buy one, get one 50% off. This is by Ruby Barrett. And this is a uh, queer female, female romance involving restaurant owners and chefs, as you can see. Um, I don't know much about it other than I think it's a grumpy sunshine restaurant owner and head chef. That's all I needed to know, really. I will buy almost any book if it's queer. <laughs> That's just how it goes. So those were all the books I got at the Barnes & Noble in Illinois. But then we went to her, my friend's like little local bookstore, which was so cute and had such a good selection. So I got a poetry book and it was called, hold on, the store was called Harvey's Tales because I still have the receipt in my book. So I remember where it came from. So I bought a poetry book called Thunderbird Inn by Colin Callahan. And I'm trying to read more poetry this year and just in general. Um, but I'm trying to find poetry that I like because the like Instagram, TikTok poetry, not to slam it. I'm glad other people resonate with it, but I need more structure and more like, I don't want to say depth, but I just, I need more from my poetry to really enjoy it. Um, so this cover drew me in. I think I read like one or two poems and was like, yeah, I'm buying this. And then the other book I got at Harvey's Tales is We Used to Be Friends by Amy Spaulding. And this has been on my radar for a while, but I haven't been able to find it in any of my local bookstores. So I was really glad to come across it in Illinois. And this is a, basically it's a friendship breakup story. And I think those are really interesting. Having been through a couple friendship breakups, I want to read how someone represents that. So, all right, this next set of books, I'm gonna sort of zoom through because they're all pre-orders and I'm gonna say I don't know much about them. So the first one is Flash Fire by TJ Klune and this is a sequel to The Extraordinaries um, and it involves superheroes in this society and um, the first one is a romance between, I think it's between a normie and a superhero, but I don't know because I haven't read it yet. But I bought the sequel because I think TJ Klune is fantastic. The next book I got is What Souls Are Made Of by Tasha Suri. This is a Wuthering Heights remix. And this, um, there's this series about remixes that I'm actually trying to collect them all because they all do a different take on a classic. So this is Wuthering Heights. Next book I got is Husband Material by Alexis Hall. Um, if you watched my vlog, you will you saw me unbox this. This is a sequel to Boyfriend Material. And so in the original book, it was fake dating. I don't know much about the sequel. I think they're getting married or they're going to pretend to get married. Not entirely sure. Don't even care. I have complicated feelings about Boyfriend Material, but I wanted to see how it's going to go. How is the sequel gonna pan out? Another pre-order, Carrie Winfrey's Just Another Love Song. This is a romance and it is about a woman whose high school sweetheart leaves and gets famous as a country singer. And that was like their shared dream to become famous singers. And then it's a couple years later, uh, maybe like 10 years later, 15, oof. 15 years later, he is coming back to town and they reconnect and sparks fly, things happen. I love Carrie Winfrey. Another pre-order, Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. And the back of this is kind of messed up. Anyway, this is a like sci-fi 
something. Main character, I, th I think it's the main character, has a curse on her to collect souls of violin prodigies for the devil, or she makes a deal of some sort. And so the final soul, um, she's found someone who's a violin prodigy, it's the last soul, then she'll be free from her contract, but I think they fall in love. And so she can't take this person's soul because she loves her. Um, and that sounds super cute. The next book I got, I kind of got as a joke, but I still paid money for it. So is it a joke? I got a furry faux pas by Jessica Cara. And this involves a furry convention. Um, it involves fursonas and geekery. And I don't know anything other than that. But I bought it because I was like, okay, this person is writing about furries. They have entered the mainstream. I need to know what this book is about. So I'm interested to see if this is like mocking or if it's genuine. Like I bought the hardcover of this. What am I doing? The next book I got is Long Live the Pumpkin Queen by Shay Earnshaw. And I only know that this is about The Nightmare Before Christmas. It's about Sally. And I like this author. She has written some witchy, spooky books. So I pre-ordered this because once again, I'm trash. Oh my gosh, we're almost to the end. So these last four books I recently bought, and by recently I mean yesterday, I went to the store for a book that they didn't have. I'm not salty about it, but I am. So I'm going to a different store tomorrow <laughs> to get that book but I'll talk about that another time. And even though I was salty, I still bought books at this store. What am I doing? Anyway, I bought A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. This is dark academia, um, queer writers. I don't know much about it. I've heard mixed things. I was waiting for the paperback. So the paperback is finally out. Now I have it. Um, I can't wait to read it and see what the hype or what the anti-hype is about. I bought So Many Beginnings by Bethany C. Morrow, and this is a Little Women retelling or remix. Um, it's in the same, like, series as the Tasha Suri What Souls Are Made Of. So these, it's a series of remixes, and this is about Little Women, and that's all I know. It was 50% off. And as I said, I'm trying to collect all of those remixes. Okay. And then two more. I bought Belladonna by Adeline Grace. This is 25% off. And it is a folklore sort of retelling about a woman who falls in love with death, I believe. Didn't know anything other than that. And the last book I bought is The Honeys by Ryan LaSala. This is YA and um, Katie Robert of, you know, Neon God's fame. I follow her on Instagram and she recently read this and raved about it. Um, in, I think, January or February, I read Ryan LaSala's first book, Reverie, and was so surprised at how imaginative it was and how good. And um, I need to pick up his middle book, but this is his third book. And it is about, um, I think it's set in a summer camp. Yeah, so it's set in a summer camp and he sort of gets into this group of girls called the Honeys and they become friends. I've heard it's horror. I think Ryan LaSala is gonna become an autobi author for me. Yeah. These are all the books that I bought in July and August because I have a problem. So if you wanna see me read these, it might take a while, but I'll get there eventually. Um, subscribe, like, comment, do all the stuff. I don't know. Do whatever you want. Bye.